In Association Online, it's easy to create sign-up forms, renewal forms, and update detail forms for your membership types. Now, you might decide that one form will suffice to do all of those three things, or you might want to customise each of your forms. You might decide that, um, sure, you want a different sign-up, renewal, or update details form, but they need to be different for each membership type. There's no limit to what you can create here. So what we do, we go into the members area, into the setup section and the sign up forms area. So what we're seeing here is a list of all our forms. Let's just assume we want to create a brand new form. We would click the new form button. And when we do that, where we name the form, that's the very first thing we do. Um, Okay, so I'll call this my silver membership sign up and I need to choose a category. So because it's a sign up form, I'll put it in my sign up forms category. Display the security code is generally something that uh, you would do. You might prefer not to do that until after you've finished testing just to save a bit of time. That's up to you. Just don't forget to tick the box um, before it goes um, live and show data from other forms. Generally we tick this box. Um, you can click on the question mark at any time to find out what it means but basically if you tick the box it means that information that has been submitted to that same question on other forms will appear on this form uh, if the person is logged in. So information from the database will populate the form and that will save them a little bit of time. You do need to be careful if you've got a membership directory and you've got people operating out of more than one address. For example, uh, in that case, if the box is ticked, uh, the two different addresses will override each other depending on how it's set up. So speak with IVT uh, if you're in any doubt there. Okay, so we've completed all those fields. We click Save Form and automatically we've got three fields added. These are our required fields to make a contact in the database. First name, last name and email address. You'll notice they have a green background and the legend tells us that a green background is for a contact profile field. A pink background means the information is being saved to the company profile and a blue one that's something that appears on this form only. So as an example, if I click the new field button and if I choose from the type box, if I choose caption, okay, then I can add um, a little bit of text. Um, use the features in the WYSIWYG editor for some basic formatting there. Now although the label uh, or what the field is called is not displayed for caption fields we still need to add it. It is a required field you'll need to see it in the back end of the system. So um, okay there we go. So we'll share this information with other forms and it, we do want read and write permissions. Now, interesting, these public permissions, this sets the permission for public use and display of this field. So what this means, read and write, is that anything already in the database will be read on the form, but the person completing the form can write over it and that will be saved to the database. Your other options there is that you can only add information to the field when it's empty. So that's right once. Once it's saved to the... So in, in effect, you're not letting people update information that's already saved. They would need to contact you to make any changes. Uh, read only means they can't edit it at all whatsoever. Um, and hidden means this information is only shown in the back end of the system. Read and write is the most typical example. Okay. So once I save this, and I'll just lift this up so that you can see. All right, so I'll 
I'll click save and close and so what we then see on our form once it updates is that our blue field now appears so we're saying please update your interest so that we can send the information that's relevant to you now we need to uh, proceed to add those interests okay so how would we do that well we would click on new field and you would then uh, perhaps choose um, a field from the contact database and the contact database field that you uh, would use that we might have one here for interest now they're in alphabetical order and so here we go there's one here called interests which I will select okay and label what we call the field There we go. And again, we would in this case share data with other forms. And if we want to see a preview, we just click save the field and we'll get a preview of what that looks like. And then of course, we would click save and close to add the field to the form. So if we scroll down, we can see there's our green field. It's going to be saved to the contact database. Now so far we've added contact database fields and we've added one blue field. There are a lot of other options as well. Let's have a look. So if we click on new field, uh, so in the type field we can see one type of field that we can add is a text box. Now a text box is simply pretty much like um, the label field actually, just a, a rectangle that you can enter a line of text. Uh, it's generally for a short response like a sentence whereas a plain text area if we were to select that okay if I were to save that so that you can get a profile look okay it's more like a paragraphs worth of information other options uh, we can have a formatted text area so rather than a plain text area, this is a text area that has a WYSIWYG editor there. You can have a date field as well. Okay, so th that's a date picker that will allow someone to choose from the calendar. Other types of fields. Now radio options. So with um, radio options, and I'll just refresh this page to get rid of that calendar. Okay, uh, I think I need to save that first. All right, that's gotten rid of the calendar. So um, with our radio options, we need to add what the options are. So for example, in our plain text area, we might um, write, um, It's a pretty random question, but I just needed a quick example. And one option would be yes, and the other option would be no. Okay. Now with these two examples, um, and that's the thing with radio options, you can actually only select one response. So it's either going to be yes or no. So if we click save and close, you'll see that on the form here, yes or no, you can't choose both. Uh, another example is checkbox, uh, checkbox options. Okay, so again, we'll be sharing. You might choose to share data with other forms or perhaps not. You might think this one's only relevant to membership. Okay, and in this case, we can begin to add our options. Okay, so we might add Google, Yellow Pages, Word of Mouth. Okay, and so on. So I'll 
just click save and close and once again that will populate the form there so with checkboxes you can tick all of them if you choose you're not restricted whereas with radio buttons it's one or the other not both what other fields can we add let's have a look here so we've got uh, we've seen date radio options now oh drop down list now drop down list is very similar to checkbox options in that you can uh, sorry very similar to radio options in that you can only select one the difference is with a drop down list uh, you use this when you've got many options to choose from So you're just selecting one option from the list. Now I'll just add a number of these and I'll just populate it with nonsense data for the sake of time. I think you get the idea. Okay, so there's no limit. You can add as many options as you like. Okay, so I'll just uh, click save and close. And so what we'll see here, Okay, we've got one field, select just one option, similar to radio buttons, except there are a lot of options within that. This takes up less what we refer to as real estate on the page. Excuse me. So with less real estate on the page, um, that is the correct choice when there are lots of things to choose from. Another field example that we can choose from is a file upload and an image upload. Now these are similar in that a, a button will appear that will click say browse and when the user clicks on that button they will be able to add a file which will be uploaded to the form. A file upload is a document and image upload needs to be a, either a JPEG or a PNG. Um, speak to IVT regarding um, any limitations for your system but basically it needs to be an image not a file okay other examples so we can add the title of the form um, to it we can add um, well we've already added a caption uh, earlier which was just providing instructions to the user not asking a question but giving information now a contacts field uh, when we click on contacts we get another field appear with all of the options from the contact database appearing here. Now if you decide that you would like to add a date field but that you want that date to actually be saved to the contact database that's fine but if you want it to have a special label then really you need to be creating that field in the database first and then selecting it here. So with these uh, customized fields the same with your drop down list and um, radio options and so on text boxes set them up in the contact database first then add them here now similar to your contacts options are the company fields so the same thing you have still got um, another field up here that you choose from uh, but in this instance all the fields relate to the company profile form rather than the individual profile form. Okay so when you're finished with your form click save form you'll remain on the same page you actually have to click back on sign up forms then to see it. Okay and here is our silver membership sign up form which has a total of five fields. At any time you can uh, delete but it's far better instead perhaps to create a category called superseded forms and file it away in there instead so then you've got it as uh, a record. The problem with deleting a form is that any information saved on that form you will no longer be able to access so it's far better to file it away instead.